All right, guys, I am so excited to bring this episode to you. It is our 200th burnout to all out podcast episode. I had so much fun preparing and journaling for this episode as I took a walk down memory lane of the last 200 episodes, as we'll say, in the fruition and birth of the Burnout to All Out brand and the Burnout to All Out podcast. We're actually coming up on our five-year anniversary in October. So it was a really, really fun exercise. I hope this episode inspires you all to go after your dreams. Don't be afraid of failures and just fucking go for it. Need some effective tactical advice that actually helps you get results and makes a real difference in your life and business? You've come to the right place. If you're finding yourself here today, it means you're getting ready to gain serious traction in your business, rapidly multiply your income and impact, and you're ready to make it happen while living all out. Guys, I'm Melissa Henault, your trustworthy corporate dropout turned six-figure business burnout turned happy and healthy CEO of a multi-million dollar online business. And you're listening to the Burnout to All Out podcast. On this show, we're serving up innovative growth strategies, simple implementation methods to put them into practice, and action-stimulating inspiration tailored specifically for the modern entrepreneur. Let's dive in. All right, guys, coming to you with my 200th episode for Burn Out to All Out podcast. This is such an epic moment. I am so excited to be here recording the 200th episode. It's been almost five years since we got started. And I'm going to just take you on a journey, on a walk through Burnout to All Out, the birth of it, the journey of it. Many of you may not know, I actually came up with the name and trademarked it with this bigger vision. So I want to take you all the way back because there's a story behind the story, right? Over a decade ago, when I was still in corporate America, I was going through what is called second line leadership training, where they're training you and grooming you to become a VP, right? Second line leader, a leader leading leaders. And one of the things we were challenged to do was to write a mission statement, okay? And the mission statement I came up with that I am aligned to this day is to be the example as a leader, to be the example that you can be happy and you can be healthy. And by the way, you can also be wealthy, meaning there are no sacrifices in this life. We can be joyful and fit and happy and have lots of money in our bank account. But the problem was over a decade ago, I felt as though I was incongruent with the mission that I wrote. And that was the first reality check as a mom of two small kids in corporate. And many of you guys know my story, but from there, really launching my own first business in the e-commerce space around my nine to five with this reality check of like, life could be better. And I am not okay with living my life the way I'm living it today for the rest of my life. And I want to live life on my terms. And I want to be the example to others that they can live life on their terms and be abundant and happy and fit and healthy, right? It's possible. And so that started me on my 10-year journey. And when I first started, it was really about, some of you guys have heard me talk about the little I versus the big I, right? And the little I was where I started, where some of you are today, right? Where I started, the little I, self-preservation, me. How do I match my W-2 and get the fuck out of here, right? How do I get out of this job and get to the time freedom, life on my terms without compensating for income, right? And so I went on this journey with first launching my first business in the e-commerce space, which allowed me to match my W-2 and leave corporate America with the little I, me, I, right? Self-preservation, oxygen mask, right? What brings me to burnout to all out 
is the birth of it five years ago, right? It was a 10 year journey of like a self realization, kind of a come to Jesus. Maybe some would argue midlife crisis. Some of you would call it a Saturn return, right? But just basically like, I am not okay with this and I am going to do something radically to change it, right? Five years from there, which would be five years ago, right? So 10 year radical awakening five years ago was the actual pivot of self-preservation. Like, okay, I've matched my corporate income. I'm out of corporate. I've got a thriving business. How can I now focus on the big eye, right? What's the big eye? The big eye is impact. How can I actually pave it forward and bring myself back to my original personal mission? Because if you remember in my personal mission, it wasn't just to self-preserve. My personal mission wasn't just to live a joyful, happy, healthy, and wealthy life. I had a larger calling, which was impact to lead from the front and display to others and mentor to others that you could live an all out life, right? Hence the birth of burnout to all out, right? And that's where we are today in this episode, reflecting on those five years, but I couldn't start without starting with the five year previous story that really brought me to my mission. So I hope that for some of you who are still trying to navigate that and figure it out, that it may take you a little while. You may actually have to go further along in your journey to get clarity for your purpose and how you're actually going to execute potentially on what you already know you're passionate about. For me, I actually had to go on a journey in order to close the loop and actually be able to fulfill the purpose. I had to go on that five-year journey, right? And I am still on that five-year journey. So let's talk about it. So as we land on this 200th episode, let's reflect on the growth of the burnout to all out brand, right? It was almost five years ago that we trademarked and launched this podcast as we're sliding into the 200th episode. And with the vision of mentoring and teaching others on how to shift really from being a miserable cow standing in the rain, how many of you guys can relate, right? I've been there to grabbing the bull by the horns, and literally squeezing the juice out of life and living life on your terms now, immediately, right? We don't actually have to leave our careers to have a joyful life. That's like a whole nother conversation, but we can start taking steps towards it, right? Okay, gang, we need to take a quick hydration break. So grab your drink of choice. And as you rehydrate, I'll give you the lowdown on my free LinkedIn lead gen masterclass. If you feel like you're screaming into the void when you post content on Facebook or Instagram, struggling to find a sustainable and scalable lead generation process that sticks, and you just want someone who's been there and done that to reveal their secrets then it's critical that you register to save your spot ASAP. During this live masterclass, you'll get to steal the exact strategy I used to scale my income from $0 to 1 million in just 19 months without spending a fortune on ads or suffering from burnout. Simply check out the show notes of the podcast episode for the link to register for your free spot in the LinkedIn lead gen masterclass. And don't worry, Even if you miss a couple of days or you can't make it to all the training sessions, we'll deliver the replays directly into your inbox daily so you can watch them on your own time. All you have to do is make sure you sign up for the masterclass before registration ends. So as we land on this 200th episode and I look back at all that Burnout to All Out has accomplished, I wanted to run some stats for you guys. Number one, we've served over 44,975 students in my totally free master classes that I put out a couple of times a year to teach people the foundations of attraction marketing that's helped me scale multiple businesses to the multiple millions mark. We've also served over 1,234 paying clients over the last 
little less than five years. That's in our Lead Generation Academy. That's in our Build, Grow, Scale, which was previously called Business Basics Accelerator, which is our mini mastermind for business. We've served, so 141 in Build, Grow, Scale, 44 clients in our Elevate 360 Mastermind, and 43 clients in our Modern Entrepreneur. And We've served over 400 attendees to our burnout to all out live event in two years with a perspective of 400 total coming just this year alone, which is just wild. And we've served over 3000 over the years in my quarterly networking events for my burnout to all out community. So In totality, the Burnout to All Out brand with a mission to impact and inspire those to live all out, we have touched over 50,000 lives as we drop this 200th episode in less than five years. That is epic. So let's take a walk down memory lane. I'm going to share with you guys just little snippets of the journey and the evolution of Burnout to All Out because it definitely has taken on many different iterations along the way. And it hasn't been without getting my knees, failing and failing forward because truly I want you guys to think about this. Success happens in the margins of failure. I'm going to say that again. Success happens in the margins of failure. And if you are afraid to fail, you will never grow. If you're hitting your target all the time, you are never going to actually hit your potential. See, the only way we can actually maximize the human potential is to shoot for higher goals that we're not sure we can hit, right? So many of us go after safe numbers and safe things that we know that we can hit, but where quantum leaps happen in your business is when you go after aspirational goals that you occasionally fail at. Because in those failures, and I'm going to share some with you guys today, in those failures are the lessons that actually pave the way for quantum growth in my business that never would have happened if I didn't fail and get the lesson, which was the blessing to implement moving forward, right? So I hope that resonates for some of you guys. So here we go. Memory lane. So in 2019, in October of 2019, I launched my business. What I should say is I didn't actually launch it. I had an idea and I hired my first coach. Any of you guys been in this space? I had never invested in myself. I had scaled an e-commerce, a direct sales business around my nine to five, and I'd matched my corporate income. And with doing that, I had never invested in myself in the sense that all of the mentorship, all of the coaching I'd ever gotten in business in direct sales was free right? So it was a huge mental jump for me to actually invest in a business mentor. And I invested $12,000, which to some of you may not feel like a lot. For some of you, it feels like a lot. For me, having never invested in myself, I wanted to barf. I could not believe I was investing, but I knew that I knew after reading the 21 Laws of Leadership that with John Maxwell, that I had reached my lid. I was not going to go any further in business if I did not recognize that I had reached my innate natural talent and I was capped out and I needed to seek mentorship that was going to show me the way to my next level because I wasn't going to find it within. It wasn't within me. I didn't have the life experience to take myself to the next level. So I hired a coach and she gave me the confidence. I want you guys to realize that many times mentors, masterminds, we're investing in leaning on their confidence in us before we have it. Their guidance for where to take the next step because we don't know. And so she gave me the confidence to actually launch my trademark burnout to all out which would ultimately become my overall brand and podcast because of remember that path, that journey that took me to the words, the punch words, burnout to all out, right? From my journey from corporate all the way. And here's the funny thing, five years ago, I couldn't have guessed 
at the business and the offers and the suite that we have now. I could not have guessed with the most curated business plan. I never would have known. However, I did have a true north and mission. And that was teaching people how to go from being burnt out to living all out. Whatever modalities that was going to be, I'd get there, right? So I named it. I got the confidence from my coach to get the trademark. And actually, she gave me the confidence to launch a LinkedIn coaching program. She looked at my business and she said, wow, you're breaking all kinds of records with recruitment and lead generation on LinkedIn in your direct sales company. And you're teaching everybody in your company for free. This is intellectual capital that you could be monetizing. Guys, again, this is where I underscore getting mentorship with people who've gone before you. She'd done this before. She'd been successful at it and she could pick up on an opportunity and a need, right? So I borrowed her confidence late in the fourth quarter of 2019, and I launched a one-week LinkedIn boot camp for $100. <laughs> you got it, $100. So here's the thing. I got 12 buyers. I made $1,200. And when I got the investment, I, that was time to make my course. I locked myself in a hotel room. And in fact, I did not make anything till after I sold it. I did not make anything until after I sold it, had money in hand, proof of concept that people wanted it. Then I went and locked myself in a hotel room for three days with a curriculum and recorded the program. To this day, many of those videos still exist in the program we sell for $5,000 today. We'll get to that. Okay. Clearly there's been updates. Things have changed on LinkedIn, but I want this to resonate. Less than five years ago was my first investment in a mentor who helped me through me leaning into her confidence and her coaching. I launched Burnout to All Out, the brand, the trademark, and my LinkedIn coaching. And I didn't stop at selling 12 for $1,200. Where would I be right now if I had such an ego going into this that if I didn't make a six-figure launch when I got started, it just wasn't worth it, right? Or I was just gonna walk away or it's not working out. I hope the rest of this story inspires you guys, right? So that Q4 of 2019, I launched my coaching, right? It's cute. I don't have a flipping clue what I'm doing. I take that back. I knew exactly what I was doing with LinkedIn. I knew exactly how to teach people how to generate leads. I'd never launched a course teaching other people how to do it. That's where I was flying blind and I had a mentor, right? Okay. So January 2020, right? I attended my very first live event. The only reason as an entrepreneur, I even went to this live event was because it was included in my one-on-one coaching ticket. I'm here to tell you, otherwise I wouldn't have showed up, right? Man, what a mistake that would have been because it was life-changing. It's actually where I met my current mentor who was on stage. And it's where I met some of my best friends in entrepreneurship, being in the room with other people who had the same challenges, the same insecurities, more success than me, less success for me, but I didn't feel alone. And I networked and I traded services with other scrappy entrepreneurs on a limited budget. I couldn't afford at the time to get professional photography. There was a professional photographer there who really wanted to learn lead generation on LinkedIn. Guess what we did? We swapped services for free. My very first web page is free photos of me from swapping services with someone, right? You have to start somewhere. You guys see these beautifully crafted photos of me now that I can afford for my phenomenal photographer to bring in. I didn't start there. Don't let that be your excuse. Oh, I can't get started because I don't have great photos. I can't get started because I don't have great videos. So what? Get started. Get scrappy. Trade, right? Okay. Now, so I attend my first live event And I start swapping and learning how to trade with other entrepreneurs to get what I need and give what people need. And in March of that year, I expanded my group coaching program to six weeks. Now, not to go down in a rabbit hole, but between that January and March, I got hacked and my identity got stolen. I was in a horrible car accident. I spent a month in February getting all of my accounts back. I never got my Facebook account back. That is, 
another story that could have stopped me dead in my tracks. I already had passive income from this other e-commerce business. I could have said, you know what? This is good enough. I could have like set my mission and goals on the shelf and said, you know what? I'm just not going there. Right. But I kept going. And in March, I expanded my coaching program from one week to six weeks based off of what? Feedback from the customers. I surveyed them and asked them what they wanted more of, right? Through a client questionnaire. And by April, I had made enough money that I was confident that I needed to invest in a group mastermind beyond the one-on-one coaching which was over at this point, and having left that live event around other entrepreneurs, I realized I needed to be in a group of like-minded humans to create momentum. I will tell you, in 2020 and 2021, one of the biggest things that allowed my business to take off in the midst of COVID was not being alone, trying to do it myself. Some of the smartest investments I made were making sure I was connected to other entrepreneurs and mentors during that time. So in April, I invested in my first group mastermind for $18,000, right? And I was exposed to other women chasing their dreams. And I borrowed their momentum and confidence to do uncomfortable things. I'll never forget being welcomed into the mastermind where I had had my largest month, the largest month to date. In that March of 2020, I had made $20,000 in a month. And we got on a call with the group and one of the girls was celebrating a 100K day. And I remember my jaw dropping to the floor, first of all, with astonishment. And then secondly, with now exciting wild belief that it was attainable. It was one thing to have a mentor that was doing it, but to be in a cohort with other women that I felt I had a lot in common with and to see that she was just a couple of steps away from me put so much giddy up in my step to pull the chair up to the table and ask lots of questions and be willing to give where I could give, right? and have a symbiotic relationship with these women. It's where I ultimately actually launched my podcast. One of my peers in the group, one of my dear friends, Rebecca Cafiero, had launched hers. We had become good friends. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love you. And if you can do this, I can too. We are no different. And I was able to borrow her Google Drive with all the documents. I didn't go through a podcasting course. I didn't invest in anything other than swapping resources with someone, borrowing their Google spreadsheet, and taking imperfect sloppy action, launching this bad boy. This podcast that you're listening to right now is an inspiration because a peer was doing it. Let that settle in as we slide into our 200th episode, right? Now, from there in August, I realized, okay, I've been in this group of women, which is phenomenal. I'm realizing I have an offer that's really selling, but I'd like to fine tune strategically. I need a university of sorts. That mastermind I was in was more of an experiential based culture and network that I was investing in. And I was realizing that I needed very structured curriculum with a step-by-step playbook to take what was converting for me and turn it into a profit machine that was giving tremendous impact at a higher level that was more structured. So in August, keep in mind, I'd already invested in a mastermind in April for $18,000. In August, I invested another $30,000 for a whole nother group mastermind where I actually learned the launch model that I use to this day and have optimized and made my own. I learned how to step into my proven process to launch my offer at a much higher price tag with a lot more encompassing. I took it from a six-week program to a six-month program. Now, talk about being terrified and going into uncharted territory. Here, I built my brand, built my offer for $600 for six weeks in August, and by October, I was flipping the switch and going back to the market saying, you know what? Actually, it's six months and I'm quadrupling the price to $2,500 because I believe in the value and I believe in the amount of time you need to be in here and I believe in the amount of support that you need for the transformation. Was I terrified to go to the public quadrupling my price 
and changing my offer? Absolutely, because it was uncharted territory. I'd never been there before. My nervous system was like, what is going on? You are not safe. And I had to lean into trust and I had to lean into faith. And I had to trust that I had invested in the right mentors who had gone before me and were the example for me and lean and borrow their confidence that this was going to work. And guess what? It did. As a matter of fact, that October, not only did I have a wildly successful launch, I actually also closed a corporate contract with a corporation for over $100,000. We did over $280,000 that month. Wild, right? But I never would have known what was possible had I not been willing to go into the unknown. I'm going to say that one more time. I never would have known what was possible had I not been willing to go into the unknown. Now, you guys know the rest of the story. If you know me today, that same program we charge $5,000 for. So we'll get to that. But that was a huge jump for me. And I began to inch the price up, right? And inch it up and itch it up. What I want to notate here from 2020 is that I made in 2020, I made $360,000. So I went from $1,200 the first year to $360,000 the second year. And out of that $360,000, I invested $48,000. That is 13% of my revenue. How much are you investing in taking your ceiling and making it your floor? right? To this day, I spend 10% or more in my revenue in my network and mentorship. Yes, I pay for my friends. I pay to be at the table with very smart and highly networked and kind and incredible individuals. I vet them out and I invest in them, right? Because that is how my business has grown through who I know as I apply what I know, what is not enough and what won't get you to the next level, right? Okay. So that was 2020. As we slide into 2021 in the world of burnout to all out in the burnout podcast, we launched what was called our business growth accelerator in 2021. Jackie and I, literally our clients were begging for it. They were witnessing the growth and the scale of our company and they wanted more than just LinkedIn coaching. They wanted us to mentor them on how we had scaled front end, back end operations, things beyond LinkedIn for top of funnel. They were seeing what we were doing. So we surveyed them, asked them what curriculum that they would really want. We came back to them with the top products and topics and started our first business growth accelerator, which I'm excited to kind of share with you guys on the ground floor. It's not public yet, but I guess it kind of is because I'm sharing in the podcast. We're actually evolving that program. We've never gone to the public with it, but in May, we will be launching this bad boy to the public called Build, Grow, Scale. And it is a business growth mastermind with my team and I for six months to really drive business growth, business scaling, and building a solid foundation like we have in order to stack and stack and stack offers on an empire with a really solid foundation that you can go back to and repeat process over and over and over again, right? Well, that started in 2021, internal, in burnout to all out. It is now 2024, three years later, we will be officially going to the public in May with this product. I hope this inspires some of you to hear our journey that it's not overnight at all, right? We launched our Elevate 360 Mastermind in 2021. This was in the midst of covid And when we first launched it, it was a virtual mastermind. It wasn't even experiential based, but we launched it anyway, right? We got our first cohort. And then as the world was opening up just a little bit, we hosted our first live event ever. Get this at my house with 12 clients. Let that settle in, right? We're going to have about 400 people at Burnout to All Out Live this year. And we had 12 in my house in 2021, right? Where do you start with one foot in front of the other? 2021 was a very, very awakening year for me. I had an identity crisis with my avatar and my business. Anybody been there? I was evolving as my audience was evolving. As my business was scaling, different people wanted different things from me. And 
my messaging was off. I had evolved, but I was still talking to my original avatar. When you think back to when I first launched my LinkedIn coaching business, because I came from direct sales, that was my audience. I thought my expertise was attraction marketing for people in the direct sales space, right? But what was coming up, what was evolving was as we were raising our price, but keeping our messaging the same, I was getting more and more cost objections. And what I realized was that my old avatar, and this is no knock on direct sales, I have a huge admiration for the industry because it got me out of corporate, it served me for a season, but the large majority of people in direct sales do not have the money mindset to invest in themselves because they're given everything for free in their training, right? It's not like the typical entrepreneur who has to wildly invest up front to see success on the back end, right? So it, it's not a far cry to see that the average direct salesperson is not going to invest twenty-five dollars to $5,000 in a program to grow their business when everything has been given them to them for free. And they've already opted into a super low risk business that didn't cost them anything, right? So I want you to think about that. So as I'm evolving and elevating my brand, I'm still talking to people who are not willing to invest. What happened is I hit my ceiling, but I hit my ceiling in who I was marketing to with price point, but I had all these hungry service-based entrepreneurs that were scrappy and they were finding me anyway. And they were dropping into my programs and they were learning everything that I was teaching. Even though I thought I was speaking just to folks in direct sales, I had financial advisors dropping in, mortgage brokers dropping in, people selling franchises. And what happened is I was telling myself a self-limiting story. And I want this to sink in for all of you. I thought, because all I knew is what I'd succeeded in, I thought that I was only an expert for this one niche audience. And I was telling myself that I wasn't for everyone else. And I was cutting off abundance from the universe by telling myself, this is your written story. This is your written passage, right? And I got lost trying to chase the dollars and trying to chase what had been working. And I was exhausted. And I actually hit rock bottom in October of 2021. With all that momentum, I'd actually made nearly a million dollars in less than 19 months and I still hit rock bottom. And this is when reality hit. See, I had been asked to be a keynote speaker for Game Changer with Kelly Roche and it was streaming live globally. There were thousands who were watching and hundreds in attendance. And she had asked me to speak on LinkedIn. And I was saying to myself, oh, This is not my audience. None of these guys are in direct sales, right? But the universe was telling me, Kelly Roche wants you to speak to her entire audience of service-based entrepreneurs about LinkedIn, and you're discrediting that. You're not even listening to it because you're so, oh, woe is me and focused on this audience that's not converting. Let me tell you what happened. I landed in Florida in the hotel room on closed cart night for my launch to speak the next day at that event. And I could not see the forest for the trees. We closed our cart that night and I lost money on the launch because remember, my messaging was off. I was marketing to the wrong audience who was not ever going to invest at the price point that I deserve to charge for the transformation people were going to get. And I'd been targeting and marketing and recruiting an audience of people who had self-limiting beliefs that were never going to invest. And instead of realizing, let me just paint the picture for you. I'm so sad. I'm so frustrated. I am in the hotel room crying, listening to Rage Against the Machine, screaming and punching into my pillows in my hotel room while I'm in a hotel full of hundreds of entrepreneurs that I will be speaking to on stage about LinkedIn. But I'm so stuck on the loss that I can't even see the opportunity that I'm sitting on. So I begrudgingly get myself together the next day. I do the presentation anyway, thinking these are not my people. I don't know why Kelly's asking me to do this, but I'm going to do it because I've got so much value out of her program. 
I walk out of that hotel not even walk out of the hotel, but walk off the stage. And I have dozens of people running up to me, asking for my contact information, asking when my next workshop is. And that is when the moment the light bulb went off. I started getting messages and DMs on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook from all these people across the world who are streaming live, who are service-based entrepreneurs asking about when my next workshop was, right? That is when the light bulb began to go off. Wait a minute. Maybe there are more people in this world who need my gifts than this niche group that I've written my message and path to because it's all I know. And this is when I hired my first spiritual mentor who helped me through my identity crisis. And maybe some of you are suffering from this right now. Preston Smiles giving you a huge shout out. He'll be coming to my live event. And Austin, he said, this whole direct sales like is a blankie for you. It is a safety of an old identity because it served me for a season and it was predictable. So I felt that it was safe. And to go above and beyond that and create a brand bigger than that was unknown. And it was terrifying, right? And what if they didn't like me? And what if the message didn't hit? Well, it wasn't hitting now anyway because I'd already outgrown that audience. And my first step was to drop the damn blanket, burn the ships and step into the unknown, into the uncharted territory and become curious at what I was capable of. I had to pivot and expand my message. I had to pivot with trust. My methods, my process of attraction marketing, they worked for any service-based entrepreneur and I needed to evolve And my program needed to evolve to serve this new network. But I was going to have to trust. Trust in the unknown instead of the fear of the unknown, right? So I'm in the red in my business. Jackie, my integrator, is in the ICU during this month. She nearly dies of COVID. I am literally grasping straws by myself while all of these people are DMing me and reaching out to me and asking about my coaching. At that moment, I had nothing designed for service-based entrepreneurs. All of my coaching was still very wordsmith towards people pitching for business opportunity on LinkedIn. What did I have to do? I had to go with the opportunity and build it as I went. I said, yes, 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 yes. I let me, let me just put a number up in the air and call this new program something. We called it the LinkedIn jumpstart. I told him it would start in four weeks. That gave me four weeks to get my act together. I built a curriculum and ran a program for service-based entrepreneurs through November and December, right? Which, by the way, was beautiful because a lot of service-based entrepreneurs, that's when their downtime actually is. It's when they're not launching things. I worked my ass off to generate $100,000 in revenue during that time to float my business, float my team, and I went down into the depths of the dark. I had to go deep into the chasm to look at myself and self-reflect. And this is where I learned to get still. Because many times the answers are right in front of us, but we're going so fast and we're not being still that the answers are right in front of us. It's also where I learned the practice of manifestation and meditating, right? That is where I learned this process, right? So many people would look on the outside and think I'm nuts for the next step that I did in generating that $100,000 in revenue. I knew that I was at another ceiling in my business acumen. Clearly, I had made money, but I was at a ceiling of my capacity of business acumen, and I needed someone to take my ceiling and make it my floor. I had to take my ceiling and make it my floor, and the only way I was going to do that was to invest again invest, right? So on the outside looking in, you would think, gosh, you just got your head above water with revenue. I went and invested in what would have been a $40,000 mastermind had I paid in full, but I didn't have the cash. So I had to pay interest on it. It was a $50,000 mastermind that I put 10,000 down on because I knew that this man 
was going to take me where I needed to go. I knew he had the business acumen and I knew he had the network and the community and the right people at the table that were going to take my ceiling, make it my floor and expand me into a more evolved targeted focus on service-based entrepreneurship. One of the best ways to serve those types of entrepreneurs is get at the table with them who you're trying to attract right? And be mentored by someone who leads this type of audience. And so I doubled down and I invested with faith. But I also want to say I wasn't careless with my investment. I knew that I was going to find the gear to match the investment to get the ROI for where I was headed, right? So what happened? As we tie up 2021, we finish the year with Me hitting rock bottom, recognizing that potentially there's a new audience for me, not potentially, I knew it was time. The universe was giving me the signs and I invested. I doubled down with faith to go to the next level, to make my ceiling my floor. Let me tell you how 2022 turns out, right? So I double down and I pivot. We work hard in January of 2022 with Burnout to All Out to pivot our message to who we're talking to. Instead of asking people, instead of marketing to people who are stuck and feeling like kind of desperate, right? We started going for different verbiage as far as looking for go-getters who take radical action, who are already showing up in their business, but are here for more, more expansion, more growth. We were using more positive, affirmative words than the negative stuckness, right? Because that's what you attract. We started speaking specifically to service-based entrepreneurs, and I crossed my fingers And focused on in January manifesting the right audience because I totally shifted the verbiage in my launch. I shifted who I was talking to and we weren't sure how it was going to work, right? Well, I'm here to tell you that we crushed our first full million dollar year in 2022. In 2022, I learned from the mentor that I invested in. One of the reasons I invested in him beyond everything else I just shared with you is that he runs, Chris Harder is his name. He runs his business with such grace while really infusing fun and not overworking, right? And that was the biggest thing I had a a call with him about when I interviewed for the mastermind. I said, Chris, I don't need to make another dollar other than if I can just match what I made last year and do it without chasing my tail and being so exhausted. And so this is where we really fine-tuned my message and we fine-tuned who our audience was and we optimized our pricing. And instead of throwing the baby out with the water, which is what some of you guys are doing, we kept the baby and threw out the water. And what we did that whole year was a breakdown of my whole business and where we could optimize. Do we have the right people in place, right? Is the offer priced properly? It wasn't. Is our messaging right to the right people? And we started making all these tweaks. And what happened is it was a year of ease and grace and space, right? Joining the right mastermind got me connected to the right people. It shifted my mindset on a whole nother level. Because it was a whole nother level of entrepreneurs of what's possible. The keynote speakers, I was able to borrow their value for execution. The swaps that happened in the mastermind where I was trading my expertise to get their expertise, whether it was media or content creation or ads or there's so many experts in their field and we were scrappy, right? And I also began to do really deep inner work because I realized in November the previous year how much the pausing and focusing and manifesting, how much the pause actually brought so much value. And I got really deep into reprogramming and going through my own inner child and some shit that I'd been carrying along for a long time that was slowing me down. And I ultimately... In the burnout to all out arena in 2022, worked less than I ever had, made more than I ever had, and trained 
for a half marathon for the first time in a decade, right? I invested in the land to build our dream home and we launched our very first burn out to all out live event that was not at my house in Charlotte, North Carolina, where we had 70 people in attendance and things did not go without a hiccup. It was my first live event. The building caught on fire. The power went out, right? And what I learned through all the chaos and the challenges were lessons. There were so many lessons in the challenges that grew me and made me more prepared for our event last year in Nashville that had more than twice as many people. I think we had 270 people registered for that event. So 2022, I must say in the world of burnout to all out was a beautiful year of a deep leaning in of manifestation and prioritization of family and health, but also prioritization and not just like white knuckling it and seeing how much money we could make, but actually how can we stick with what we have and actually just work less? How can we optimize what we have and do it less? How can we launch less through finding the right audience who's willing to pay and raise our prices? That's exactly what we did, right? Isn't that beautiful? Versus not creating space to think and not creating space to breathe. The innate American thing to do is just to go, 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 go. Muscle through, muscle through. Try another offer. Sell another thing. Do another thing, right? Survival mode, right? But I didn't. We paused, we fine-tuned and went back to market with the same thing that still has videos from five years ago in it, right? Okay, so that was our first full million dollar year. And that brings us into 2023, which was last year, right? And the big question last year, and I told my mentor again, I said, I want a redo of last year. It was amazing. I took my family to St. John. Like we went to Disney World, I traveled, took so many trips, right? And the question was, how much can I hold? How much can I hold and maintain what I've learned to be able to do, right? Because the year before taught me, you can make money without sacrifice. You just have to be relentless with your boundaries and very strategic with how you run your business and who you're doing business with. I can't tell you how many people I parted ways with and brought in new people because they were the right fit, right? And I warn you, if your business is on a rocket ship, like ours has been, some people will serve you for a season and there is a time you'll quickly notice they're no longer the right fit. We've grown and they haven't. And in order to take this rocket ship to the next level, we need new astronauts. And that kind of brings me into, we'll talk about 2024 in just a second. but. 2023 was about how much can I hold while maintaining what I've learned about living all out, living the all out lifestyle, abundance in all categories, not just money. So I continued to invest in my high level mastermind. I invested in a women's investing group. I got certified in hypno breath work because I thought, heck, instead of having to depend on someone else to take me through this nervous system regulation and flow creation, I want to become the expert so I can tap into this shit any time. And I do every day now, right? And I bring it to my clients and it allowed me to launch a whole nother program, which we'll talk about, right? I continue to invest in myself. The year of 2023 was all about mentorship. I had a spiritual mentor. I have a fitness and nutrition trainer that I work with to this day. I have experts in every area of my life holding me accountable spiritually, with my family, with my nutrition, with my business, with my money. We published our very first burnout to all out book and became best selling authors with our mastermind members and my Elevate 360. And we had our Nashville live event. We doubled our attendance with over 200 attendees. Remember, two years previous, there were 12 people. I share this episode with you to cast light on humble beginnings and a willingness to just keep going. So we had over 200 people in Nashville last year, and I completed my second half marathon into in 10 years. And in this second half marathon, I shaved 
12 minutes off my race. For those of you in running, you know that's a big deal. So I got fast, fit, healthy, and we ended up making $3.8 million last year, right? I had a massive spiritual awakening. I went to Bali for 10 days, really worked on my connection with my God and just creator and really getting further into purpose and impact. And like, why am I here? Who can I serve more? How can I take my gifts that have been given to me and put them back out into the world in a way that propagates larger impact, that big I that we talked about in the very beginning? I mean, it's been a fun rabbit hole to be in this year going into the big I. And just further diving into the inner work necessary and the skills to cope with stress. I went from learning manifestation practices and mindset and neuro reprogramming to also nervous system regulation. I'm here to tell you going from 1 million to 3.8 million might sound sexy on the outside. It's a lot to hold. You have to be careful what you call in because it takes more team. You have more clients. It takes more leadership. It takes more money, more money, more problems, right? (laughs) So also in 2023, what we did was we raised our prices from 4,000 to 5,000 for a flagship offer, right? Our lead generation, lead gen academy. And we had a pivotal record breaking year. We had three launches in a row that did over $700,000 each for the same offer we sold for six. $100 a piece in 2020. Let that resonate. Let that resonate, right? So don't throw the baby out with the water. So last year in Burnout to All Out, we brought in a ton of new clients. It was expansion. We brought in a ton of new teammates. While I was still able to go to Bali, while I was still able to go on trips, while I was still able to train for half marathons. And towards the end of last year, I started picking up really heavy weight right? Now, burnout to all out. Where are we today? We're in 2024. If there's one thing I've learned is that we can put together the most strategic plans, but our higher source, God, who, whomever you call your higher being, has a bigger plan. And What I've learned is that I can have the best of intentions and I set out, you guys know from listening to my episodes, I always write very strategic business plans, but I'm also still learning to embrace and surrender. Embrace and surrender and listen to the feedback that's coming at you in business. Is there something hitting you over the head repetitively and you're ignoring it? Like I was with the pivot with my brand two years ago, right? Is there something in your gut that's telling you, but you're not listening? And are you stubborn and sticking to the plan just because that's what was written in the plan? Or can you be curious and can you be flexible and can you be open to maybe different ways for abundance to happen than what you wrote out? Maybe you're in a season of expansion. Maybe your message isn't hitting right anymore because you've evolved and you're marketing to the wrong audience. Are you creating enough pause to reflect? Are you creating enough pause to write down the lessons, right? So our very first launch of this year, we wanted to come out of the gates and hit over a million dollars. And we actually just barely hit right under 600,000, right? Some could say on the outside, oh, that was a backslide. But I've come long enough in this journey to realize, wait a minute, Growth happens in the margins of failure. Success happens in the margins of failure. I know from this journey of peak, peak, slope, peak, peak, slope, or we'll call it peak, peak, slide, peak, peak, slide. The slides, when you're in the shadows of the depths of the valley and the dark, that's where all the lessons are for growth and expansion. So instead of resisting them, and I'm speaking to myself right now, can you embrace them? And look at them and be curious about what the lessons are. I actually spent 30 minutes this morning writing down nine lessons that I learned from a launch that didn't go as planned before moving forward into our next one. 
Because if you don't learn your lessons, you'll repeat them and the universe will keep shoveling them out to you until you learn them. So you may as well pause in the depths of the valleys of dark and ask yourself, what am I learning in this? What can I take away from this? What is the lesson in this preparing me for I don't even know what's ahead? Because when I sat down a little while ago and actually journeyed all the layers of identity crisis that I've had, which it's got to be a whole nother episode. Like when I left corporate, when there was a consolidation and I thought it was the end of the world, but then I ended up launching another business and being more free than ever, right? I have so many stories like that over the last 10 years where I, when I felt like everything was falling apart, it was actually falling into place. But I didn't know because I wasn't on the other side yet. So 2024 is about bringing in more astronauts for where we're headed, we are bringing in top-notch experts. It's not only mentorship that's going to get me where I want to go, but if I want to scale, I need to bring in experts who've been there, right? So we're really growing a powerful team this year, and I cannot wait to bring them on to interview with you. We launched The Modern Entrepreneur, which is my sole project of burnout to all of It is the like golden child of burnout to all out. It is an entire program around bodies building businesses. It's a collective that I've created that all that I've learned about the self-management to thrive as an entrepreneur that has nothing to do with business strategy and everything to do with the inner work and the energetics that have gotten me here and allow me to regulate and allow me to hold, right? So I've deepened my spiritual practice more than ever. And I continue to work on my self-limiting beliefs. And I continue to grab at the root any fears that come up. I'm working on them right now as we speak. It's called work for a reason because it's work, right? I continue to work on my self-limiting beliefs that I deserve what's coming to me, that it's not going to disappear, that the other shoe is not going to drop, that I need to learn to step in faith because with every drop in a goal on the other side is a massive slingshot waiting for my growth, right? Can I trust in the faith of that, right? I continue to invest in masterminds. I continue to invest in mentorship to deepen everything about me, at least 10% of the revenue in my business. I took my team on our very first team retreat, which was phenomenal for team culture and connectedness, right? This is a year of expansion and growth. Last year, I was very much in my feminine energy. This year is a more divine, healthy, masculine. And I want to specify the divine healthy versus the unhealthy masculine I was in in corporate, which was very like white knuckle it, work 80 hours a week, like show up and do everything. If your calendar isn't packed, you're not working. Go, 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 go. That is not the masculine I'm talking about. 10 years out of corporate and really breaking down that masculine energy that wasn't serving me that I had to operate in to survive in a male driven industry. I had to do a lot of unpacking over the past couple of years to find my feminine. And that's where I've been living the past two or three years. But now that we've scaled up to this multi seven figure a year company in less than five years, it takes leadership and it takes confidence and it takes decisions. And so when I say divine masculine, what I mean is that I am leaning in more than ever with making confident decisions that the company needs me to make, whether it's investing in a software or it's firing someone that's not the right fit, or it's hiring someone that's the right fit, but it's stepping into that confidence and direction for the team that the team needs of me, right? Okay. So where else are we going? I don't know. I told you guys, it's a conscious surrender, right? 2024, I'll land on this. Two keywords for me. The main keyword that's come to me since the beginning of the year is impact. How can we impact with a big eye? On this 200th episode, I'm still looking at how can we take our gifts, my gifts, and how can I impact more in a positive way to contribute to humanity? that allow people to live a more happy, joyful life. So that's the big I. The second piece is the surrender, right? It is a dance to be able to come in with the divine masculine, make lots of decisions, have a strong business plan, but also be willing to surrender 
to the process and know that there are some things that are under your control and there's others that are divinely written for you that are coming your way, right? And being able to recognize what you can and can't control and surrendering is a continual process for me. And faith and trust that all that I go through is for me, not to me. And what blessings am I getting out of them? So in a bow, wrapping this super lengthy episode up, I didn't go it alone in my office to build the burn out to all out brand. That didn't get me to this 200th episode. Mentors allow you to borrow belief and confidence until you have it. Strategically aligning yourselves to mentors who are doing it and executing on what you desire and living the life you desire are uber important to your growth. Networks that expand you in ways that you can't replace being behind a Zoom or screen, right? Priceless. The best friends that I've made out of being in the room, priceless, right? Every master once was a disaster. We all started somewhere. I started with the first unknown offer for $100, not sure if anyone was going to buy, right? And I had to put a stake in the ground. Are you willing? Can you set your ego aside and put a stake in the ground? And I've had to do it over and over and over again. I had to put a stake in the ground to come to market with all of our other coaching programs. I had to put a stake in the ground when we rebranded and redirected who our audience was, not knowing. The more you go through those reps, you get less fearful of the unknown. And I shouldn't say you get less fearful. You get used to the fear. You get used to the fear. It never goes away, right? The uncomfortable zone never changes. The stakes just get higher. The decisions get bigger. The failures still happen. And it's what you learn from them as you move forward that will define your success. Fear can be transmuted into trust and faith. And faith is where growth happens, right? So by the way, as we wrap up, all these incredible mentors that I've been talking about that have literally help evolve and grow the burnout to all out brand all the way up to this 200th episode. They are going to be, get this, at burnout to all out live in Austin the first weekend in October. I couldn't think of a better way to celebrate the five-year anniversary than bring in my strategic partners who have grown me to the same stage to bring love, education, inspiration, and knowledge to you while you network, grow, and expand with the opportunity like I've had over the past couple of years. I hope you guys can make it. Our gold tickets are totally sold out. We still have some silver tickets for VIP day and general admission tickets. We'll make sure they're in the show notes, but they're going fast. The last two years we have sold out. So you don't want to miss your ticket. With that, I hope you guys really enjoyed this episode and just reflection of our 200th episode and journey of burn out to all out. Thanks guys so much for listening in on today's podcast episode. And I can't wait for you to see my upcoming guest in the next episode. You are going to love this keynote speaker. Hey, here's the deal. If you liked this, please subscribe and leave a review. And you want the latest online business growth strategies and exclusive LinkedIn pro tips sent straight to your phone? Text the word UPDATE to 704-318-2285. That is text the word UPDATE to 704-318-2285. Can't wait to see you guys. Come find me over on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever you like to hang. I cannot wait to hear how you are enjoying and applying what you're learning. You guys reach out to me over on social because I love hearing what's resonating with you. When you reach out to me and you send me those personal DMs, they really do impact the content I continue to bring forward to you. So again, come find me, Melissa underscore Hinault over on Instagram, Melissa Hinault over on LinkedIn and Facebook. Can't wait to see you guys over there.